she needs no introduction, but I'll say it anyway. Representative Margie Taylor Green of Georgia, thanks for joining us here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And um, obviously, you're wearing the pin of Lake and Riley, yes. a Georgian. Yeah. Uh, and um, for the State of the Union, he won't dare actually raise it. He should. He should raise her memory. He should speak her name. But I noticed Karine Jean-Pierre, they use language like, oh, what a tragic loss. It wasn't a loss. She was robbed. Her life was taken from her yeah. because of their policies. Right. Uh, she was brutally murdered. Uh, she was an innocent young woman, 22 years old. Uh, I've spoken with her parents. She was a, had a very strong Christian faith which is the reason why she wanted to go into nursing. And they said I that- I saw a letter she wrote when she was like six years old saying she wanted to be a nurse. She it wanted, so yeah, Lakin believed in helping people. And and that's uh, the memory that her parents want to, to be remembered. They want her remembered for who she was, not how her life ended. Of course. Um, and I, I do think that's so important. And so, but here's, here's the real truth. Our, our, the state of our union is Lake and Riley, and that's the easiest way to sum it, sum it up. And um, I'm wearing this pen, uh, <laughs> say her name, Lake and Riley, because the Biden administration refuses to say her name Yeah. and she's an American citizen. Uh, they'll be concerned about all kinds of people all over the world, but they won't talk about Lake and Riley. And tomorrow is the State of the Union address uh, where President Biden will be coming into uh, the people's house, whether he knows it or not. Mm. And um, I, I want to hear him say Lake and Riley. And I want to hear him apologize to her family uh, because he has blood on his hands. Over 90 executive executive orders that ripped our border wide open and, and allowed that monster to come in our country. Not only is he not going to do that, Congresswoman, but he's actually going to go even further. He's going to do worse. He's going to say, oh, well, we could fix this problem if it weren't for Donald Trump and the Republicans. Mm -hmm. I, I, sometimes I marvel at the audaciousness of their lies. <laughs> I marvel at it, too, <laughs> quite frequently. Um, and, yeah, he's going to try to blame Republicans, say that we aren't giving him funding and resources. It's a complete lie. We passed H.R. 2, strongest border security bill. And then also um, he can't lie to the American people and say that because, again, when he came into office, over 90 executive orders, uh, completely undoing everything that was in place. Mm -hmm. Remain in Mexico. He brought back catch and release. Um, ICE detention facilities remain mostly empty. There's empty beds in there because these people come in, they process them, they give them a free cell phone, they hand them some paperwork and go, oh, come back to court in 2035 or yeah. some random date in the future. Oh, the, the P in CBP is not for protection, it's for processing. Yes. That's what they're doing. They're yeah. just there to process and he wants more money so we can have more people process them. That's right. And our Border Patrol agents, um, I serve on the Homeland Security Committee. And the Border Patrol agents, uh, it, they're not even being allowed to do their jobs. It's right. not fair to them. It's not their fault. They don't want to be the the welcome to America yeah, committee. They didn't decide to go into no. law enforcement to just facilitate. No, the these are great people. They they are truly compassionate. They love their jobs and they care about border security. So it's it's bad enough that uh, the numbers of people have crossed the border illegally. It's bad enough in terms of how it affects crime in our communities. Mm -hmm. And of course, the drain on our social system and tax dollars and our schools and on and on. But you said Homeland Security. How worried are you about the national security implications of this, of the people who we already know that were on our terror watch list and, and more importantly, the people we don't know? Oh, extremely worried. Uh, most people here that actually know the truth are extremely concerned. Um, over 10 million people have crossed our border, but it's the 2 million, approximately 2 million gotaways that we don't know about that you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. um, these are the people that Border Patrol never stopped and actually had contact with. We know they came across the border. We don't know where they're from. We don't know who they are and we don't know where they are. And we don't know what they're going to do. However, we do know a percentage of them are terrorists. Mm -hmm. We do know that they have come uh, from, from countries that hate us. We do know that they're criminals. Um, and, and murderers and rapists and child rapists and every kind of criminal. Um, but we, we do have an extreme danger. It is quite a threat to our national security. And it's one of the reasons why you led the charge heroically, and thank you for it, for the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas. Thank you. Are you concerned that the Senate is um, at best dragging their feet, or at worst, they're just going to try to make this thing go away? Well, Chuck Schumer has said that he's going to table my articles of impeachment that passed the House. Uh, that would be a grave mistake, and it would it would really hurt Democrats this election year 
because this is the number one issue mm -hmm. across the entire country. This isn't a Republican issue. This is an American issue. Democrats care about border security. Republicans care about border security. And Americans everywhere are not only, frankly, outright pissed off that they are paying for all of this, they're they're losing their schools, they're losing their community systems, uh, centers, they're losing their parks, and they're watching their city streets, apartment buildings, and hotels be flooded with illegal aliens while they're being forced to pay for it. They're angry. So here's the deal: if Chuck Schumer wants to table these articles of impeachment, I think he, I think the Democrat Party as a whole is going to face the wrath uh, of the American people, and that'll happen on, on election day. Have you talked to Senator John Fetterman by any chance about this? I have not. I, I've never. I mean, met he, him. he's he's said more about border security than some of the Republican senators lately, mm. and uh, I just wonder where he where he might stand on it. I honestly yeah. have no idea. Um, I, with regard to the State of the Union, this could very well be Joe Biden, but I mean, it's it's really the beginning of the presidential election now, basically, because we have our two candidates officially now that Nikki Haley is out of it. Um, do you cons do you think that he's going to try to be that Joe Biden who pretends to be a unifier and pretends to be good old Uncle Joe and yeah. I can work with my friends on the other aisle? Or are you expecting to hear mega fascist from him at this speech? Oh, I'm expecting to be uh, purely as nasty as possible. Yeah. Uh, that's how he's been uh, since he's been in office. That's how the Democrats have been um, while they've held power, you know, here in Washington. And, uh, yeah, I think he's going to be nasty and blame Republicans for everything. And I guarantee you he probably blames the former president, President Trump. Of course. Uh, he'll blame him, too, because it, he sees it as an opportunity to campaign. If he does that, are you going to do what you always do, which is sit quietly in your chair with your hands folded on your lap and just uh, be, a, be be nice and polite or or are you are you ready? Are you are, you, are we going to hear some fireworks from MTG? Well, I'm I'm always a good girl, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Surely you don't. Thank you for joining us, Congresswoman. Thank you.